All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to find the holes in the slant asymptotes. <clears throat> so you guys already did, it. these are gonna be your examples. Oh, so for this one, it doesn't have a denominator. You guys already did um, the zeros, the vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptotes. The horizontal asymptotes are gonna be very closely related with the slant asymptotes. So I'm gonna show you something really fast. So what you guys did before, is you looked at the p of x over q of x and you said there are three different things that can happen the degree of p can be greater than the degree of q the degree of p can be equal to the degree of q and the degree of p can be less than the degree of q so what you're looking at right here is if this one's bigger than this one then there's no horizontal asymptote What that means is that there is a slant asymptote. So you're always gonna have one or the other. When you looked at this one, you looked at the degree of P divided by the degree of Q. So this one did have a horizontal asymptote. So then there's not gonna be a slant asymptote. This one, you looked at it and you said that this degree is higher than this degree. So then you had one at Y equals zero. And when that happens, then also there's not gonna be a slant asymptote. That's pretty much always gonna be true. You're either gonna have a horizontal or a slant asymptote. So let's look at the slant asymptote first. What the slant asymptote means is, you have something like this. This degree is higher than this degree, so I'm gonna have a slant asymptote. The way that I find it is, I say y equals whatever happens when I divide this by this. So I'm gonna use long division which you guys already learned. And you're just gonna forget about the remainder. So I'm gonna do x squared divided by x is x and multiply times both of these, which gives me x squared minus two x. I can't forget to subtract both of them. Those cancel and these cancel. Bring the next thing down, which is negative three. And I can't divide that. So this is gonna be a remainder right here. So I have a remainder of uh, negative 3 the remainder doesn't matter so I just get rid of that that means that I have a slant asymptote at y equals x so the slant asymptote what that is is it's a line that it gets very close to at the equation y equals x which is right here so that means that my my graph is gonna get really close to this it's never gonna quite reach it but it's gonna get really close to this okay I also have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So that means that I have an asymptote right here. So what that's going to look like is my graph is going to go like this and like this. So it's slanted now instead of being a horizontal asymptote. And that's the difference. We'll go over graphing it more on tomorrow's. But for the most part, just what you need to know is this guy right here. Okay? I'm going to do another example. Okay, so this degree is higher than this degree, which means there's no horizontal asymptote. There is going to be a slant asymptote. So to find this slant asymptote, I'm going to say y equals whatever's left when I divide the top by the bottom without the remainder. You get rid of the remainder. So I'm going to divide this by this. x squared divided by x is x. And then I multiply times both of these. Put it in parentheses so I remember to subtract them both. These cancel out. 9x minus 7x is 2x. The next term comes down. I divide the first term by the first term. That gives me plus 2. Multiply times both of these. 2x plus 14. Put in parentheses so I remember to subtract them both. This cancels out. This gives me negative 6. This is the remainder because I can't divide it by x. So it doesn't matter. So my equation is y equals x plus 2. So that means I have a slant asymptote at y equals x plus 2. To graph that out, I go to 2 on the y, the y-intercept of 2, go up 1 over 1, and I'm going to have an imaginary line right here that it's never going to reach. I need to also look at my vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals negative 7. So 
So I'm going to have an imaginary line right here that it never reaches. The graph is going to look like this. And that's it. You don't have to worry so much about the graph right now. We're going to get more into that tomorrow. But you do need to kind of have an idea of what's, what's going on there. Hopefully that's good for the slant asymptotes. For your holes. What the holes are is there's an actual value that the graph skips. So let's say that I have a graph like this. y equals x plus 2 just means the same example that I just did. This is the graph. But if it tells me there's a hole, a hole at x equals 5, that means at the 5, it's going to skip over that value. So there's going to be a value that it cannot be. And I draw just a circle on there showing that it's an empty value. So what happens is the graph goes like this. When it gets to x equals 5, it skips over it and keeps on going. x cannot never actually equal 5. How you get that is you look at something like This one, it's going to have a 0 at x equals negative 1, and it's going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. When the 0 and the vertical asymptote are the same, they become a whole. So you no longer have a, a 0 at negative 1, and you no longer have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. What you have is a whole at negative 1. So they kind of cancel each other out. And you can see that happen if we actually factor this out. This is going to become x plus 1, x plus 1. These are going to cancel each other out. So when it cancels, whatever sets it equal to 0 is going to be a whole. You're looking at what, can what sets the canceled part equal to 0. It doesn't matter that this is still here. Okay. So you're looking for that. You're looking for something to cancel. So the first thing that you want to do is you always want to factor them. So this is going to be x plus 4, x plus 3. This is going to be x plus 3, x minus 3. What does that mean? That means these two cancel out. So I have a whole at negative 3. I also have a 0 at negative 4. I have a vertical asymptote at 3. And because they're the same degree, I have a horizontal asymptote at the leading coefficient divided by the leading coefficient, which is 1 divided by 1, or 1. And this one should be x equals. Don't let me get away with doing stuff like that. That's what you're looking for on these guys. So for holes, you're looking for what cancels out, and set that canceled out part equal to 0. That's your hole. And that's all you're really looking for on these guys. When I show you what that looks like more on the graph, I think it'll make a little bit more sense. Now, now I'll do that part on the graph. And that's, that's really it for your holes and for your, and for your slant asymptotes.